welcome to um, the best and worst of August 2013. That's Brogan Hayes. This is Rory Cushion. And our beautiful cameraman Brian Lloyd is behind the camera. This is Why So Serious. Yes, in Cineworld. Thank you for allowing us to shoot here. Now, right off the bat, the third best movie of August 2013 is... Alpha Papa. The Alan Partridge film. I said it wrong. It should be like Alan Partridge... Alpha Papa. Yeah. Or Alan Partridge is in Alpha Papa. I actually wasn't a huge fan of Alan Partridge when he was on the TV, so I didn't go into this with huge expectations, uh, but it was still probably mm, the funniest film I've seen this year so far. It hasn't been a great year for comedy. It really hasn't. Like, there hasn't been any huge standouts. Like, even The Heat or This Is The End or The World's End have all been levels of disappointing. But this, I was the opposite of disappointed for. Yeah. See, I'm a huge Alan Partridge fan, and going in, I was like, please don't let me down, because the trailer is brilliant. And I was really praying that the film wouldn't let me down, and it didn't. It didn't disappoint. If you're a fan of Alan Partridge, he's still the same character. Some of the characters have changed slightly, but there's been a gap in time, and you can kind of forgive that. But Alan Partridge is still the centre of it, and he's still the same character, and he's still hilarious. Directed by an Irishman, has an Irish dude in it, Colin Meaney, who yeah. is kind of the heart of the film. <laughs> um, and Steve Coogan is hilarious as the uh, as the lead guy. And it was written by that dude who I love. Uh, Armando Inucci. Thank you. I love like Armando Inucci. In the Loop and The Thick of It and Veep. So funny. And the Armando Inucci show. Which I haven't seen, which but I will have to check out. Most of you guys probably haven't seen either. It's amazing, seriously. Not uh, out of ten. Nine. Wow, yeah. uh, seven, so that's an eight right in the middle. Yeah. Uh, third worst movie of August 2013 was Planes. I said her. It's a spin off of Cars, which. And then Cars 2, which was. Uh, it's no longer Pixar, this is just Disney, mm. before they start making apparently trains and boats. Have you heard this? Have yeah. You, have, you, have you seen this? Yeah. Have you read about this? Yeah. 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 Um, I'd be quite happy if they made like hovercraft. Yeah, we had this. Hovercrafts would be kind of cool, and spaceships. Yeah. I'd be fine with that. Jet skis. Yeah. People carriers. What are those things with the fan on the back? Hovercrafts. Are they? No, no, like swamp boats. Yeah, like a swamp boats. Yeah. Swamp boats. Because to be crocodiles. That's yeah, cute. Yeah, it'd be fun. Uh, Dane Cook, who nobody likes. Is <laughs> I, w- I went to see um, Dennis Leary do stand up one time, and Dane Cook was one of the sports, and he was. Really funny. I don't know what happened to him. Dan Cook, who nobody <laughs> likes anymore. <laughs> yeah. Uh, voices Dusty, the crop plane, who he's building crops for, we never know. No. Why does um, the plane need to drop we, we never find dust out. But crops he, in a... He, he wants yeah. to be a world champion flyer plane, but as he has a fear of heights, he can't and he has to overcome it with like his friends and family and if it sounds really uh, familiar and derivative and um, like you've seen this film before, you have. It's, it's called, called Cars. Cars. Yeah. So, yeah. some of the 3D stuff was pretty cool when the plane is like turning over. Yeah, and doing loop de loops and stuff. Um, but it wasn't very funny. See, um, it, was not, it wasn't offensive though. Like, no, it's grand for kids, no. but it was just very unoriginal, very uninspired. Yeah. Very nah. The reason that it's in the bottom three, for me anyway, is just because of what Rory just said, but also the fact that it's so inoffensive. Mm. It's aimed at boys between the age of three and six because it's, it, it, to me, it feels like they have the Tinkerbell franchise for girls mm-hmm. and they're trying to set up this automobiles um, franchise for boys, which is not necessarily a bad thing, but I don't think that they needed a cinema release. Absolutely not. You're right. Uh, four out of ten. Yeah, I agree with that one. Yeah. Second best. Yay! Movie of August is a really late release in August, mm. so you may not have seen it by the time you watch this video. The Way Way Back. The way, way Back. Sam Rockwell. Oh, you, you legend. legend. You absolute. Legend. Every man who went to see that film, like when it was over, must have been like, I want to be Sam Rockwell. Rocking a hat, rocking a white vest, owning a swimming pool park. It's the story of a kid. What's his name in the film? What's the kid's name? Uh, Duncan. Is it Duncan? No. Thank you. It is Duncan. You're right. Thank you, Brian. Uh, Duncan, who's met, forced to go on a family ho- holiday with his mum and her boyfriend and 
his daughter and he's at that awkward sort of 14 year old age where he doesn't really like anybody but he doesn't really want to be on his own mm. and he finds a father figure a friend a mentor a big brother in Sam Rockwell really great cast all kind of doing fantastic work Steve Carell for the first time I think in his career playing someone truly unlikable yeah yeah uh, a really nasty piece of work but he's not even aggressively horrible it's not like he's mustache twirling villain he's mm. just not nice to this kid who is just lost in the world. And I think that's what makes it such a relatable character. This guy who has to look after this kid who's not his own, you can see why he wouldn't necessarily want him around, but there's no need to be a dick about it. Yeah. There's also Alison Janey, Tony Collette, uh, Maya Rudolph. Yeah. And then the writers and directors of the film, Jim Rash and the other guy. Nat Faxon. Nat Faxon, who wrote The Descendants and have written and directed this. It has a very little Miss Sunshine vibe about it. Yeah. It has. It's like Adventureland. It's like a few other films you've seen before. Like a way better version of Adventureland. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's that whole. A way way better. <laughs> Shit! I didn't think of that. <laughs> uh, it's it's yeah. It's, it's a lot like several films you've seen before, but it's like the best version of those films you've seen before. Which yeah, is, it takes the best elements from those films and puts them all together yeah. in one film. Uh, eight out of ten. I'd go nine again. I absolutely love this film. Wow. It felt like an indie independent cinematic hug. Mm. I loved it. Second worst film mm. of August was One Direction, This Is Us. If you go into this film thinking that you're going to get to know One Direction, which the title would have you believe? This, this is, is us. us. You're not going to. No, I didn't learn anything watching this. I, like, there was nothing in, in this film that I didn't already know. Other than, you know, five <coughs> late teenage, early 20 lads together with kind of unlimited power and money are little shit. Yeah. <laughs> that was what I learned. Yeah, like, they've been dropped into the world where they're uh, uh, liable to be spoiled and they, they've completely allowed that to take them over. And I'm trying to say, if I was 17, oh 18, Christ, 19, I, and that happened to me, I'd be like, bring it! I wouldn't, I'd be like, carry me onto the stage, I'm not even walking out there. <laughs> but like, I don't know, there's just something about their attitude to the whole... We're too cool to uh, to learn dance moves, and yeah. we don't want to wear the same clothes, yeah. and we're so different from all the other boy bands. Uh, it worked for the Beatles, <clears throat> One Direction. Don't get above your station. Yeah, and Backstreet Boys, and they're pretty cool, I guess. Yeah. It's just uh, talking heads, some some behind the scenes tour stuff, some three D, generally impressive three D, on stage song stuff, but it's just. It's, it just it, feels very generic. Like it's directed yeah. by Morgan Spurlock, who did Supersize Me and some other pretty good documentaries. And there is no sign in the film that anybody directed this, let alone somebody who has been so done films that have been so well received in the past. Yeah, there's no like interesting questions asked. It's basically mm. to like tell me your story. How did you get to be here? Yeah. And are you enjoying traveling around the world? Are you a little bit tired? Yeah. 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 That's about as like. I in depth as the conversations get. I get the feeling that um, all of the stuff where they're snapping at each other and arguing and getting upset because they've only had 10 minutes sleep sort of thing is was filmed, but it's just not in there. Mm. I mean, <laughs> to compare something quite bad to something also quite bad was the Katy Perry film. Mm -hmm. They showed her exhausted. They showed her crying backstage because Russell Brand had broken up with her and they did show her sort of warts and all to an extent but these five lads just come off as perfect yeah this isn't a movie for fans of documentaries this is a movie for fans of one direction yeah so unless you are a fan of one direction three out of ten two out of ten <laughs> yeah best film of august 2013 was elysium coming up coming down Yay! After all the vaguely disappointing sci-fi films, original sci-fi films that have come out in yeah. the last while, yeah. this one finally was really good. Really good. Director of District 9 um, hits up another socio-political economic problem like he did with the last film mm. and gives it a sci-fi sheen. Mm. There are lots of visible, really obvious influences in this film. Yeah. Like, uh, anyone who's a video game player will be like, oh... <laughs> It's like spot the thing. Yeah. But, or uh, anyone who's ever seen a sci-fi film before would be like, I think the Elysium 
spaceship thing looks very much like this and this and this and yeah. this and that. It's 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 kind of a hodgepodge of everything. Not unlike the way Oblivion was, but it is better than Oblivion. Yeah, I think. Yeah. Um, Matt Damon's fantastic as the lead character who gets kind of accidentally dosed with radiation in his workplace. So he has to break into the space station Elysium, which is only filled with rich and powerful people like politicians and models, I guess. And just rich people. Uh, uh, up on the space station, have this cure-all machine, and if he gets up there, he can cure himself of radiation and he will live. Yeah. But it's the whole breaking into the space station, which is a problem, which is run by Jodie Foster and her oddly misplaced... Oddly dubbed. V- ...voice. It's, yeah. uh, it's she's her lips j- are just jarring. Like a tenth of a second out of sync with the audio it's really really odd it's about that and like the movements her mouth make don't match the sounds that are coming out of her mouth it's, it was really just like uh, what's happening <laughs> why is why is science fiction changing her mouth I just can't but uh, yeah, she's the like the, probably the only problem in it and on the flip side of that shout out Copley who was the hero of District 9 Ugh. is my call for villain of the year so far he, he was genuinely fantastic. Scary, genuinely yeah, scary. He was a nasty man. You see him who takes so much joy just being evil. Yeah, and he's a mercenary um, killer trying to kill Matt Damon to stop him getting up to Elysium. And whenever he kind of pops up on screen and you're going, okay, he's going to chase Matt Damon, and he starts chasing Matt Damon, you are genuinely scared for Matt Damon. You don't know which way it's actually going to go. Yeah, he's but, he's one of those bad guys where you are convinced that he will at any moment kill the hero. Yeah, because he can, and everyone else around him because. Yeah. Uh, so there's a lot in there to enjoy it's, it is like one of the best films of the summer uh, and Absolutely. unfortunately it hasn't made all that much money in America so people go and see Elysium seriously like, it hasn't seriously. even made as much as District 9 has did and did. it cost like yeah. four times as much yeah. to make so uh, 9 out of 10 9 out of 10 for me yeah, so that's yeah. our best the worst <laughs> which you haven't seen no but I'm just going to enjoy slating it anyway Christ on a stick um, <laughs> Grown Ups 2 On the plus side, but then on the negative side, the fact is that everything that is wrong with cinema today is in that film. Is in that film. See, I didn't go see it because I hadn't seen Grown Ups 1, and I really felt that the backstory was so intricate and complicated mm. that I needed to see the first one. So, I, you know, I just, I just didn't see it. Yeah, like I was sitting there waiting for previously on Grown Ups to, to come up with the start <laughs> of the film. That would have been really fun. But instead... It started with Adam Sandler and Sam Hayek waking up in bed with a deer in their room. If you've I think, seen the trailer, I think eating a brat. I can't okay. really remember. And well, look, if you're a and deer then, and you find yourself in a bedroom, what else are you going to do? I don't know. And then uh, Sam Hayek gets, wakes up and she's like, "Oh, a deer!" Uh, and then it, oh, dear. it pisses on Adam Sandler's face and then runs around the house and wrecks the place. And the son is like, "Oh, can I get on the deer?" And then the daughter is like, oh, I left the door open uh, last night so so many animals come in and get some food in case they're hungry. And everything is like, it's like a tidal wave and I can't breathe of, of how much shit. And I'm just like, <laughs> it's too much. How did, how did anyone think this was a good idea? And then you just get introduced to like Chris Rock and his family, Kevin James' family, David Spade and yeah. his new family in the film. There's no one in the film who's a likable person. It's the only film this year I I've sat, I couldn't. I had to. I had to leave. Wow. I had to leave. And wow. I, as a critic, it pains me to think that you know the last second half of the film could have been, you know, this year's greatest film. Yeah. But I just have to live in the knowledge knowing that I just, just I gave up for the first time ever. Zero out of ten for me. Wow. Just See, irredeemable. And that is she, did, she couldn't sit through the trailer. So you yeah, no, I actually work. couldn't. So that's the best and worst of August 2013. Mm. Um, so the three movies we're looking forward to in September 2013. We did a co- you did a good call last month for I August because she called it way, way back. And it, as she turned out, it was a fantastic film. Uh, some of these we've actually already seen. Some of them we're really looking forward to seeing. Uh, and here but it's, it's always no. interesting. <laughs> it's always, and, and no, it's always interesting, you know, because we've seen some of them, but obviously we haven't seen all of the releases for September yet. And we say these films at the end of each, each episode, and then we come back going, "Oh my God, why did we even say that film? It was like, awful. I want to die." So it's always interesting. Yeah, but we won't say which ones we've seen and which ones no, we no. have called. No. So first up is about time. And uh, I'm not saying it is going to be the best film I've seen this year 
because I haven't lived through the rest of this year yet. But it, it, it's, it's in the running. It's gonna keep the full review for next month. Yeah, um, Richard Curtis's new film. So you know the king of the Brit rom com, his new film, um, starring Donald Gleeson, Bill Nighy, and Rachel McAdams. Yep. And it's about Rush, which is Chris Hemsworth playing. His name. James Hond. Thank you. See, little Wikipedia man back there. <laughs> Chris Evans were playing James Hunt. Daniel Brill playing. Nicky Lauda. Uh, directed by Ron Howard. Written by Peter Morgan. Big prestige, potentially Oscar y yep. magnet type film. I always um, think Ron Howard films are great because he's actually an amazing director um, and his work on Arrested Development is absolutely brilliant. But he's still Richie Cunningham from Happy Days. <laughs> and he does do, like. <laughs> Bad films now and again. Like he did Angels and Demons, and he did. Yeah, true. Um, I did like a beautiful mind. Like I know it won Oscars, but fucking hell. Yeah, no. But like he did some fantastics. Like yeah. I let Paula Torte in. Yeah. And Richie Cunningham from some Happy other Days. Stuff. That is our second choice. Yep. For potentially great film in September, and our last one is Insidious Chapter Two, which I know you won't be going to no, see. I will not be going to see. Uh, I really enjoyed the first one. Um, the Conjuring was earlier this year. Same director. I don't know how he's managed to get two horror films out in the space of a month. But he has a clone. Oh. Yeah. Um, same cast is back as well. So anyone who's seen the original might be a bit oh, confused. That's encouraging. Yeah, might be. Well, it's confusing if you've seen the first one. It's like how. But, I'm but it's still at, encouraging that all the people who were in the first one wanted to come back and do the second one. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah that's true. Also happening in September is our. Why so serious? Third. Third. Why so serious? Cult, Cult comedy, comedy classic, classic screening. screening. Um, it's happening in the Grand Social just off Liffey Street. It's on Liffey Street. Just, just on by the Liffey Street. Bridge. Uh, September 25th, we're going to be screening. Are you ready for I this? I'm going to the birdcage again. We're going to be screening Groundhog, Groundhog Day. Day. Yay! <laughs> uh, major, majorly funny Bill Murray movie, which I haven't seen often enough. No, me either. No, me either. None of you have either. And it's Bill Murray. Who doesn't love Bill Murray? Even if you, you know, haven't seen it and you're just, well, I don't know if I'll go see it. It's Bill Murray. It's a last bag. And it's, just, it's like one of the greatest comedies of all time. Mm. So, mm-hmm. if you're around September 25th, Doors at 7, Films at 8, come along. There'll be a tiny trivia quiz at the start. We'll give away stuff. Stuff. Yeah. So, that's what's going on. Um, thank you to everybody who came to this screening in August, because we haven't done one of these since then. Um, it was great. It was a really good night. There was gales of laughter at the uh, the birdcage, which is it is deserving of. Um, it was a really nice atmosphere. So if you haven't been to one of our screenings before, come along. Find us, say hi, watch a movie, have a beer, and we'd love to see you there. Yes. So yeah. from the blog award nominee. <laughs> Rory, were we nominated? We for were Toad's Nom, Joe. Oh, Toad's my noms. God. Uh, this has been Brogan. This has been Rory. That's been Brian. And, and this, this has been Why So Serious. Yay! August 2013. Yes, darling. Yay! Yay!